So now what we need to do is we need to create a way for users to log in. And the way that we're gonna do that is we are going to create an auth controller. And this auth controller is just going to be a simple class within inside of our controller package with an annotation of controller. And we are also going to go up here and we are going to bring in our user service, of course. And we will go down into here and add a constructor. We're gonna import this and add a constructor to bring in the user service so we can get access to all of those methods. If you look here, we have a red squiggly line underneath our user service. And this means that we didn't wire up or I didn't wire up the actual club service. So if you look on our other services, we have this service annotation up above on the top. So if you get that red squiggly line, it means that you didn't add it. So I'm just gonna go up here and add service and that red squiggly line should go away. Okay, great, looking good. Now what we need to do, uh, just like we always do before, we need to create a git mapping so that we can render the view for our actual register page. So we're gonna go into here, this is gonna be git mapping and it will be a register. Down below, we'll go public string git register form. So we'll say get register form. And over in the parameter, we're going to bring in our model and we will also have a register DTO. And we'll just go ahead and bring this in while we're here. Okay, so now what we need to do is bring in our registration DTO. So we'll bring in registration DTO. We will call this our user and we'll new up the registration DTO. And we're not actually going to do anything to it. It's just gonna be empty and we will add this to our attribute. And the reason that we do this is because if you don't, you will probably get errors um, or reference errors if you don't actually do this. So it's kind of a weird thing that we have to do. I don't know why Spring MVC makes us do this, but it is just kind of what it is. So now what we need to do is we need to create a register page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here and create the register page. And I'm also going to take this club edit page and copy and paste it over into the register page just so that we can get our layout without having to worry about actually, you know, copying all of this over. And I'm just gonna go into here, call this register. And also on my GitHub, I have some styling, some CSS styling. I know that you guys love CSS styling, but unfortunately I, <laughs> I didn't want to inc include all the CSS styling because it's going to just take way too long. So if you want to, if you want to style it yourself, you're more than welcome to, but I am just going to go on my GitHub or you can just go on my GitHub and copy the styling and copy the whole entire page if you want to. If you want to style it, it's up to you, but I am going to just copy everything from my GitHub and remove everything from the actual club edit right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste everything into here so that we can save ourselves a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go, just go ahead in here, copy and paste all of this over. And this looks good. It looks like we got a red squiggly line, so we might need another div here. Yep, I am going to remove the login form. I'm gonna remove this. And I'm also just going to take the styling and put it within the actual div, not the best, but unfortunately the styling doesn't work well with the layouts. So I'm just going to put the styling within the actual div right here and it will look a lot better the way that, all right, there we go. It looks pretty much the way that it should look. Okay, so now what we need to do is go within our actual post uh, endpoint or we need to create our post endpoint and what we're gonna do is we're going to go within our auth controller right here. And we are going to go ahead, go down here, and we're going to create a post mapping. And this post mapping is going to have a register and a save. After this, what we're going to do is we are going to have a public string register and we need our validation. So we're going to have to add our valid. And also we're going to bring in our model attribute we're gonna, our model attributes going to be called a user and we will go ahead, bring in valid. And what we will have is a type of registration DTO. So registration DTO, this will be called, we'll just call this user. 
I'm gonna come down here and this will be the binding result because we need validation. This is going to be result and this will be model. We'll bring model, that looks good. Go ahead, get some brackets. So here is where we're going to have our user entity. So our user entity, what we're going to do is we are going to try to find the existing user or existing users. Whenever you have an actual uh, register endpoint, you need to make sure that people are not signing up and creating two names or people are uh, creating users with the same names because that could potentially screw up everything. And we are going to check by two actual endpoints, or we're going to check by the email, and we are also going to check by the username to make sure that there are no duplicates. And I'm gonna go within my user service. We don't actually have a find by email, so I'm gonna go find by email, just like this. We're gonna pass in the user.get email. Okay, and then what we're gonna do, we're going to click on our actual little red light bulb thing right here. And we're going to add a find by email to the user service. Then we go into our related pro we click related problem. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create or implement a method because it is indeed a interface. Then what we do is we just go into our actual user repository and we're going to get our find by email. Then we are going to pass the email. So we go back to our actual um, controller. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to check if existing user email. So if existing user email is not null. So if there is an email, that means that there already is somebody in the database and we're going to do a couple extra null checks here. So existing user dot get email. So we're also going to check by the actual field you want to be uh, pretty, you want to make this actually pretty robust because this is pretty important. And we're also going to check if it's empty. So we're going to say if existing user email dot get email, and we're going to say is empty or is not empty. I should say this is one we're going to actually have the results. So we'll have results. We'll have reject value and this will be the email so we checked by the email there is already a user there is already a user with this email username and i am going to put this email slash username because it is technically a security risk if you just tell somebody that the email is not wrong it is a little bit overkill i'm not gonna lie just being that it were just kind of coding this for learning. But if you're implementing this in a, a production environment, you're going to want to do this. So it's probably a good thing that we are actually doing all this extra stuff because it's pretty real world. And that is what we need thus far. So we also need to check for the, so we'll say user entity, and we also need to check by existing user username. We could wrap this in a whole entire method and we could possibly create a repository that will check by find by email or username. And I actually did that before, but it just didn't, it was just kind of wonky and I didn't like how it works. So I think it's better in my opinion, just to have a two separate methods. So this one's going to be find by username and we already created these methods, I think. So we're going to find by username. We'll say user dot get username so we'll pass that in there and of course we don't have this method anymore so we need to go actually create this so we have find by username we have related problem go ahead implement this method so implement this method and we'll say user repository dot find by username and then we're going to pass in the username so that looks good so let's go back to our auth controller we're looking good and then we'll just go ahead copy and paste this down and we'll just go ahead and switch all this stuff out. So existing username, existing username dot get username, existing user username dot get username is empty. And it will do the exact same thing. It's going to check username. There's already a user with this email username. 
Okay. So looking good. Now all that we need to do is uh, finish off our validation. So we're going to finish off this validation right here. So say return. And if it's not what we want, we're going to return back to the register URL endpoint. But if we get to the very bottom here, that's a good thing. That means everything has passed. So we'll have user .save user, and then we'll return and we will redirect them back to the club with a success parameter. So we'll say clubs dot success and we'll have success just like this okay so we need to add a param so that the user knows that they were registered successfully so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here i'm going to add a th so we're going to add th if the actual param so if the param that we have is success so if the param dot success if there is a param dot success there what we are going to do is we are going to make a class so we'll have a class this will be alert be alert success so success then what we will do is we will go here and add a actual parentheses go in here, make this, and we'll say you are registered successfully. So you are registered successfully, exclamation mark. We'll go ahead, rerun it. So I'm gonna go ahead, rerun this thing. So I'm gonna go into my actual register page. I've got a brand new user that I'm adding. It's going to be pretty much the same thing, but I've added a two right here we're going to go ahead register this and it's going to say you are registered successfully so we've finally gotten our register endpoint looking good we are ready to move on to the actual sign in anyways i hope that you guys enjoyed this if you did make sure to hit that subscribe button smash that like button and as always thank you for watching